Germans are an old people, but Germany is a relatively new nation. The German language goes back more than a thousand years, longer than English, French, Spanish, or Italian, and Germans were recognized as a distinct people in the days of the Roman Empire. Yet it was 1871 before the numerous, fragmented German states and principalities were united by Bismarck to form Germany as a state. But centuries before that, large-scale emigration of Germans had begun, first to destinations within Europe and later across the Atlantic. Even before they joined the great worldwide streams of emigration which followed the discovery of the Western Hemisphere, German peasants had settled in enclaves scattered through much of Eastern Europe during the Middle Ages. Authorities and rulers in these regions often encouraged these settlements by allowing these peasants to live under laws modeled after those of their homelands, rather than the laws and practices of Eastern Europe. Though called German law, these laws applied to all who lived in certain settlements, including settlements whose populations were not predominantly German. Many of these settlements absorbed into German culture some of the native inhabitants, with German land laws prevailing and creating more secure private property for peasants, with accompanying benefits of greater incentive-driven agricultural development more advanced than that generally prevailing in Eastern Europe. In short, Germans brought with them the cultural advantages of Western Europe into a generally more backward Eastern Europe. Polish, Czech, and Hungarian rulers welcomed German settlers into their lands for precisely this reason. Communities of German miners likewise spread down into the Balkans as mineral deposits were discovered in various parts of the region. Major urban centers in medieval Eastern Europe were typically dominated by Germans, not only demographically, but also culturally and economically, rather than by the indigenous peoples of the surrounding countryside. Before the year 1312, the official municipal records of Krakow were kept in German. That year, the change was made to Latin, and it would be another century before a majority of the city's population was Polish. German merchants spread through Eastern Europe and the Balkans, with Nuremburgers, for example, taking over the metal trade of Bohemia. Germans were also welcomed as formidable fighting men in the service of Eastern European rulers, and German artillerymen served in the armies of the Ottoman Empire. In addition, the Teutonic Order of Knights became a major military force in itself, conquering Prussia and engaging in warfare with Poland. Nor was German migration in Europe confined to Eastern Europe and the Balkans. German skilled craftsmen spread throughout Europe during the 15th, 16th, and 17th centuries. In the 15th century, many German craftsmen emigrated to Italy. Clockmaking was just one of the crafts in which Germans excelled. German clockmakers worked in Milan, Rome, and other Italian urban centers. French royalty imported German craftsmen to make clocks for them. As late as 1650, the French invited German clockmakers to Lyon, which was already a leading clockmaking center of Europe. In short, Germans were a major part of the worldwide and centuries-old process of diffusion of skills from where they were abundant to where they were more scarce, whether those skills were agricultural, commercial, military, or the skills of many artisan occupations. This role preceded both the age of transoceanic migrations and the era of industrial revolution, though both these epochs enhanced the worldwide role of Germans in spreading their skills to other countries and regions. Emigration was not simply a search for an outlet for skills that were in more demand elsewhere. There were also reasons to seek to escape the German homelands. By the 18th century, several successive generations of Germans had experienced almost unremitting warfare on their territory. The southwestern regions especially were repeatedly devastated by armies of various nationalities. The crops destroyed or requisitioned, the people robbed, pillaged, and tortured, entire towns destroyed by blast and fire, and industries and agriculture paralyzed by fear and uncertainty. During the Thirty Years' War, a single observer in the Palatinate counted twenty-three villages in flames in one day. Altogether, the Palatinate lost four-fifths of its inhabitants during that war. It is hardly surprising that emigration from the southwestern regions was particularly heavy in the eighteenth century. Rulers of various southern German principalities issued edicts designed to impede or forbid emigration, but these had little effect. Indeed, emigration increased in size and in the diversity of destinations. 
In 1709, about 15,000 Germans went to Britain, of whom nearly 4,000 settled in Ireland. In addition, 3,000 crossed the Atlantic to New York, and other 18th-century German immigrants settled in North Carolina. Pennsylvania became the principal American destination because of its religious toleration, which attracted especially various pacifist groups, such as the Mennonites, Amish, and Quakers. As early as 1745, there were an estimated 45,000 Germans living in Pennsylvania. About 30,000 Germans settled in Russia in the mid-1760s, and nearly 20,000 Germans immigrated to Hungary in 1770 alone. Origins as well as destinations changed during the 19th century. As late as 1834, virtually all German emigrants were still from the southwestern region. But a decade later, five-sixths of all German emigrants were from other regions. Half of the Germans who emigrated from 1816 to 1830 went to South America, but after 1830, about 90% went to the United States, on into the early 20th century. As of the early 19th century, the German states and principalities were essentially an agrarian world, where three-quarters of the population lived in villages and small towns. Such industry as textile manufacturing and the production of metal goods was carried on largely by artisans. However more technologically and economically advanced the Germans were as compared to the peoples of Eastern Europe, compared to the peoples of Western Europe, they were at that juncture followers rather than leaders in industry and, to some extent, in agriculture as well. More advanced and more scientific farming methods were imported from England, though Germans also reorganized their own agriculture and introduced new crops. In industry and transport, however, Germans were even more dependent on the technology already developed in England. Germany in the early 19th century had no modern steam-powered factories like those in England, no railroads, no sophisticated investment banking. Englishmen came over to Germany to install industrial equipment and teach German workers how to use it. Englishmen built railroads in Germany and remained to run them, because Germans did not yet have the technical capability to do so. Englishmen and English capital began the industrial manufacturing of wool in Germany and helped found the German steel industry. The Belgians and the French also provided some of the technological knowledge needed to get German industrialization going. However, by the end of the century, Germany had surpassed them all as an industrial power. The number of steam engines in the country rose from 400 in 1834 to triple that number by 1850. Coal production increased more than tenfold from 1815 to 1850. By mid-century, Germany had nearly twice as many miles of railroad as France. In the last decade of the 19th century, Germany overtook Great Britain in steel production. By 1913, on the eve of the First World War, German steel output was double that of the British. As Germans emigrated to other countries in Europe, the Western Hemisphere, and Australia, many went as bearers of the most advanced science and technology. Others went with artisan skills that were in the process of being superseded by modern industry in Germany, but which still had a contribution to make in other lands that had not yet reached that stage of economic development. Some Germans also brought with them a tradition of military prowess and skill, going back at least as far as the Roman Empire, when German generals held supreme command of Roman legions. Men of German ancestry were likewise to hold high command in the armies of Tsarist Russia in South America and in the United States from the Revolutionary War of 1776 to the two world wars of the twentieth century, in both of which the U.S. Army was commanded by generals of German ancestry, Pershing and Eisenhower, respectively. Germany in general, and Prussia in particular, have long been famed for their military traditions and exploits. In both world wars, Germany inflicted far more casualties on opposing armies than the German army itself sustained. In addition to a long list of famous military leaders over the centuries, Germany also produced the most famous theorist of the role of war, Karl von Clausewitz. Ironically, Germans around the world have also long been prominent among pacifist religious groups, as well as among military leaders. A high value placed on education was another characteristic that German emigrants took with them to other parts of the world. As early as the 17th century, Germany was noted as a place where educators were respected more so than in other parts of Europe. 
In the 19th century, Germany was one of the first European nations to have free and compulsory public education. Germany had more teachers per capita, and a higher proportion of the national output was devoted to education than in many other European countries. This high priority of education was more than a policy of a government. It was a cultural value of a people. Germans in the Austrian Empire had literacy rates many times higher than Serbo-Croatians in the same empire, just as Germans had several times higher rates of literacy than Russians in the Russian Empire, and several times higher rates of literacy than Brazilians in Brazil. Kindergarten is a German word, and a German institution which took root in other lands, and, at the other end of the educational spectrum, the research-oriented German university likewise was imitated abroad while great German intellectual and artistic figures such as Kant, Goethe, and Beethoven became part of the culture of Western civilization in general. Few German emigrants were at these Olympian levels, but their commitment to education and to the culture of their homeland found expression in the schoolhouses that sprang up wherever Germans settled, even in countries where the surrounding society had little or no interest in education and the bulk of the population was illiterate. In addition to education and a desire for education, highly specific scientific and technological skills migrated with the Germans to their new lands of settlement. The first pianos in colonial America were built by Germans, and Germans likewise pioneered in building pianos in Tsarist Russia, Australia, France, and England. A long German tradition of fine optical products, exemplified in such old optical firms as Zeiss, Schneider, and Voigtlander, lay behind the establishment of the leading optical firm in the United States, founded by two German emigrants named Bausch and Lohm. Germany's preeminence in the brewing of lager beer has been reflected in breweries established by German emigrants in other lands around the world. Germans were producing beer as far back as Roman times. In 1991, Germany produced more than twice as much beer as Russia, despite having a much smaller population. In fact, Germany's output of beer was exceeded only by that of the United States, where the leading breweries were founded by people of German ancestry. In short, German emigrants did not simply leave Germany. They took part of Germany with them, preserving its culture not only for themselves, but also making it part of the larger culture of the societies in which they settled.